down on Hollywood Street. Every one of you, chance to meet. That's a little example of ragtime here. And that's gonna be our lesson today for talking blues. Uh, ragtime was a dance that everybody was dancing to about 100 years ago, more or less. It was, it was before there was blues, before there was jazz. It was the pop music uh, fad of the early, early 1900s. And even before they had recording technology that was widely used, uh, before people had albums and things like that, uh, ragtime was a style of music that was really written for the piano. And so people would learn to play it or they would get player piano roles. And that was the early way of distributing music uh, kind of uh, mechanically. So player piano roles and people playing rags in their houses, you know, everybody had a piano. Um, now, on the guitar, it's a little tricky because obviously it's arranged for the two hands of the piano, so you have to kind of figure out how to adapt it. And uh, a guy who did that extremely well was a guy named Blind Blake, Arthur Blake, um, who recorded between 1926 and 1932. He made 80 uh, songs or, or sides for uh, Paramount Records. And virtually nothing is known about Blind Blake. I mean, he made tons of records. Uh, he was a very popular guy. As a recording artist, that's a lot of records to make in that period of time. But uh, his biography is, is blank. And after 1932, he disappeared. Nobody really knows what happened. So uh, kind of a mystery. But his playing survives, and it's, it's really phenomenal stuff. What I just played there was kind of a little uh, patch up of um, two of the songs that he did, uh, one called West Coast Blues and the other one called Wabash Rag. Now, the idea of ragtime, um, it's really a, a combination of two st sort of musical styles that you wouldn't put together normally. One is the march. The march, uh, originating in Europe, uh, was a military music, and it's just left, right, left, right. So all the songs and the feels that we, we associate with the two beat can be uh, traced back to the march, and that includes rockabilly. <laughs> you know, or country music. Uh, the polka, you know, they're all uh, with their roots in European march music. So you get that two beat, that one, two, left, right kind of a thing. And that's what's expressed in the bass notes. And then against that, you have this syncopated melody that's kind of bouncing all over the place. And they called that ragged time. It's raggedy, you know. It doesn't stay strictly within the box. So uh, ragtime was the style. Uh, composers like Scott Joplin were extremely popular. Now for guitar players, uh, to manage uh, the ragtime feel, you have to substitute the bass strings for the left hand of the piano. And of course, back in the day playing acoustic guitars, they would play finger style with bare thumb or thumb pick. I've adapted this to electric, and I use the, the technique known as hy hybrid picking, where I use the pick uh, on the low notes and bare fingers on the high notes. Now, it sounds very tricky when you hear it, especially up to tempo, but in fact, the, the ingredients are not that difficult. I'm going to show you how it works. Now, you have a figure in your curriculum uh, there, your, your, uh, uh, in the magazine, I should say, uh, that shows you uh, in figure one how the bass note fits against the chord. Now, um, it's important that you play the chords and the bass notes simultaneously so that you finger the chords because when we get into the melodies, the chord fingering is very important. So starting at the top of figure one here, you see A7, and the bass note is the bottom two notes of the chord, and this is generally gonna be the case throughout. Now, since I'm playing electric, I'm muting with the heel of my hand here, and I'm using all downstrokes. So I'm gonna play the example for you, and when I play the chord on the first beat, I'm gonna pluck it using my bare fingers, like this. All right, so here's figure one played kind of slow. One, and, two, and.
All right, 